I went to a party and I showed up there super early because I'm literally that person. Anyways, I was talking to the guy throwing the party and I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. I don't really want to drink. Yes, I'm literally the lamest person alive anyways. He's like, okay, do you want a bottle of vodka? Boy, I just told you I didn't want to drink. And he's like, no, like an empty one. You can fill up with water and pretend you're drinking. And I'm like, you're a genius. So I do just that. And I walk around the party drinking out of this bottle of vodka that actually has water in it. People literally thought it was legendary. They thought I was getting so drunk. So basically at this point, I was lying to everybody at the party. So anyways, I get thirsty. So I step outside and start ch chugging this bottle of vodka that's actually water. And I look to my left and there's this girl literally staring at me. Okay, I have like a really gross, disgusting story time. So just listen. So like in seventh grade, like girls at my middle school thought it was like trendy and like cute and quirky to like piss your pants like at school like do it at school like they would like laugh so hard that like <laughs> oops like they peed themselves and like would keep it on their butt all day and then they would like ask for like their crush's sweatshirt to like cover up like the pee on their butt just because like they're so cute and quirky and i remember this one girl pissed herself at a choir concert backstage in the choir room and the whole entire choir room smelled for like a day and there was just a puddle of pee on the seat and she literally had to go to the bathroom and wet her whole pants so that you couldn't tell that she pissed herself like it got to the point where like two or three girls a day were walking around the school with pee on their butt and like no one said anything like it was cute and trendy and like even the guys jumped on it they were like oh, oh my god like she peed like what <laughs> like it's just so like unbelievable but like it literally happened and i don't know why story time motherfuckers my boyfriend throws this party i'm like can i bring my best friend he says i don't really know her and then i was like i'm gonna bring her anyway a little bit into the party he's like i'm gonna go pick up my friend and i was like okay i sat outside my best friend was inside, I thought she was. I didn't really care what she was doing. I trusted her. He comes back 30 minutes later, comes outside and everything is fine, he's not suspicious at all. I then sleep over at his house that night. He's in the shower and his phone is blowing up, like blowing up and I'm like, who the fuck is that? My Snoopy ass looks on his phone, it's this guy Luke and he doesn't have any friends named Luke. It was constant text like, you need to break up with her, you can do so much better, blah, blah, blah. And then Luke, says you know she's my best friend she can't know about this so i sat there they've been hooking up our whole relationship so i tell his mom and i leave i'm a fucking circus this is a crazy story time of when i used to work at tilly's so buckle up this middle-aged mom walks in the store right and she just starts walking around the men's section and literally just grabbing everything she sees i mean she's not even looking at the sizes so we thought that was weird, so we went up and asked her if she needs any help, and of course she said no. Then she decides that she wants to try everything on. So I unlocked a room for her, and then I told her that she can only have seven at a time, and she literally had a million things, and she just ran in, shut the door, and cut me off. So we started to get suspicious, so I started talking over my little headset thingy and telling the people around the store what's going on. We knocked on the door like three times, asking if she needed help or needed any other sizes, and of course she just said no again. Then she comes barging out and literally runs, runs to the front door and just leaves. So I walk in to see and there's literally a bloody tampon on the floor. Two days later, she comes back to the store? Crazy story time about how my mom kidnapped my sister. So my mom and dad split whenever I was really young. And at this time, they were always in and out of court battling for custody over my sister and I. Well, the one day my dad drives my mom downtown to the courthouse because she didn't have a ride. And before she gets out of the car, she's like, can I give the girls a hug? And my dad was like, yeah, go ahead. Little background information. I was more of a daddy's girl. My sister was more of a mommy's girl, which is probably the reason why she took her. I was sitting by the window. My sister was sitting in the middle seat. So she gives me a hug. Next thing I know, my sister's seatbelt was unbuckled and my mom was running across the street with her in the middle of downtown. Didn't even look for cars. So my dad got out of the car, ran over, grabbed her, picked both of them up, and walked over to the sidewalk, and my mom was screaming bloody murder. So this guy called the cops, and my dad was trying to show them custody papers because he had full custody. But the cop knew my mom, so he let her take my sister. We got her back, but I didn't see this bitch for like four months.
Y'all, a cheater is a cheater, and if he's a cheater, then he's going to cheat. It don't matter what you do, what you say, how you dress, how you act, or what you change for him. If he wants to cheat on you, he's going to cheat on you. And a lot of the times, the girl that he cheats with is not prettier or better than you. I'm going to explain why. Men that cheat, not men, boys that cheat <laughs> are very insecure. And a lot of the times, they get with girls who are too much to handle because they want to see if they can get him they get him they fall in love but then they realize oh this girl's too good for me oh this girl could get anybody she wants she might cheat on me she might do me dirty and their ego starts to suffer a little bit so what they do is they go and talk to other girls and do stuff with other girls to boost their ego a little bit but you need to know that they're actually really insecure really broken and have nothing going for themselves if they have to cheat on somebody to feel better about themselves Oh, honey, <laughs> you you dodged the bullet with that one, okay? Don't worry about it. Keep it pushing. Story time about my toxic ex-friend group. So my freshman year, I had moved to a new high school. So right away, I started being friends with this group of girls, and they were super nice. And I was also friends with this group of guys. Well, since I was friends with both groups, we all started hanging out all the time, but only whenever I was there. The boys just didn't want to hang out with the other girls. And after a few months, the girls started acting really strange. So anytime that I would hang out with the boys and not invite them, they would ignore me for a whole week. Meaning they wouldn't talk to me in school, they wouldn't answer my messages, or anything like that. Not a single one of them. And also, anytime that we hung out, they would be like, oh, invite the boys. And it was like they never wanted to hang out with me. So the one night, one of the boys was throwing a party. And I was going and the girls asked if they could come, but they had drama with a lot of people so the boys didn't want them coming, but I invited them anyways. Like for part two. Story time about how my boyfriend cheated on me with a 17 year old girl. So when summer started, I started working at this new job and I had a really good connection with one of my coworkers and he was 28 years old. So we started talking but I would get mad at him a lot because he would ignore my messages asking to hang out. And on top of that, every time that we got done with work, we would all go sit and eat and he would sit next to this one girl. And by the way, she was 17. And I could see them flirting all the time. Well, finally, once summer ended, she moved away. And then I felt like I had a real chance to start dating him. So we started hanging out a lot and hooking up a lot. After a few months, I started taking our relationship serious. Well, apparently not for him because there was this girl on his phone that he had been texting a lot. So weirdly enough, after that, I get a DM from the girl that he would always flirt with at work. And she asked me if I was dating him. And I said, yeah. And then she goes, oh, well, he's been texting me a lot. So then I blocked her and went and hooked up with one of his friends that night, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with a 17 year old girl. So like I said, I hooked up with his friend that night, but I didn't tell him for a couple months because he would always say that we weren't dating, even though we were basically in a relationship. So we were doing really good until around Christmas time. So after he gave me my gifts, which was socks and a candle, he left for Massachusetts. I don't know if I said that right. And a month before this, I had unblocked the girl that he was flirting with. So weirdly enough, after he left, she DM'd me. Basically asking if I was still dating him again. And I was like, yeah, why? And she goes, hmm, well, I need to tell you something. He actually took my virginity and he's been sending me a lot of gifts like a record player and albums. And we've been talking on the phone every night. So when I confronted him about it, he said he felt bad for her because he took her virginity. So after that, I confessed to hooking up with his best friend and called him a child predator. Crazy story time about how I found my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So every year, my mom and stepdad would have a Christmas party and everyone from both sides of the family would come. And I also invited my boyfriend. And at this time, my boyfriend and I were both juniors in high school. So everybody came to the party and everything was going good. Well, like an hour into the party, all the adults were super drunk. So before we all open gifts, I decided to help my mom clean up dinner. So while I'm washing the dishes, I look over and my aunt and boyfriend are talking a lot. And she started to get really touchy with him, but I didn't think anything of it because she was super drunk. So after I'm done cleaning up, we all start opening gifts. And my boyfriend goes up to my room to go get his phone off the charger. And after he went upstairs, my aunt was like, oh, I need to go throw up. 
So about 10 minutes goes past and my boyfriend's still up in the room grabbing his phone. So I went to check on him. And I walk upstairs to see my aunt and my boyfriend laying on my bed making out. Like for part two. Part two to how I caught my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So like I said, they are laying on my bed making out. Doors wide open. They don't even bother to shut the door. And both of their shirts are off. And I think I should just put in here, my aunt is like 28. She's on my stepdad's side. She's really young. So they look up and my aunt's just like drunk as fuck looking at me. And she's like, do you want to join? Like, bitch, what the fuck? So I'm just like shook. And I start screaming. Everybody rushes up the stairs. And my mom pushes me out of the way and sees my boyfriend and my aunt laying on my bed with their shirts off. So my mom starts screaming at everybody so my mom calls the cops says that an adult is touching an underage boy and she calls his mom tells her what happened so my boyfriend and i broke up so that spread around the whole school and word got out that they actually started seeing each other crazy story time about how my sister and i found out that we were hooking up with the same guy so i was a freshman my sister was a sophomore and there was this really cute guy in her grade that i liked but I could never find a way to talk to him because we weren't in the same grade and had none of the same classes. And my sister and I were not close at all. Like, we didn't tell each other shit. We didn't really talk to each other or anything. So by that being said, we never told each other about the boys that we liked. We just didn't have that bond. Well, track season came around. So they called all the people down who wanted to do track. And I saw him walk past my classroom window, so I decided to go too. So I signed up for track and him and I started to talk a little bit. We exchanged numbers and he was popular, I wasn't, so he didn't want to be seen with me. So after attendance, we would go to this graveyard right by the track and hook up. Well, the next day we had a meet in our school. So him and I went to the graveyard, hooked up, and that's when it started getting crazy life for part two. Part two. So on our way back from doing our thing... We had saw a group of kids that were behind this bush and they were chiefing and we didn't think that they saw us because we were like, oh, they're just smoking, like whatever. So I go back to the meet, everything is good until the end of the meet. One of my best friends sends me this picture that I guess somebody posted on their story and it was a picture of me and the kid hooking up and next thing I know, my sister is blowing up my phone. And like I said, my sister and I didn't have a good bond, so I didn't give a shit what she had to say because I didn't know. So then I got home. <laughs> and as soon as I walked into my room, my sister was literally waiting there for me. And she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, him and I are in a relationship. And I'm like, bitch, what the fuck? And she was like, well, it's on the down low, but we're in a relationship. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're a whore. So then she decides to drive both of us over to his house. So we all decided to just stay away from each other. But then they got back together. So I just figured that wasn't fair and I'm still hooking up with him while they're together. Crazy ass story time about how my best friend's parents walked in on me sleeping with my best friend's brothers. And yes, I said brothers. So my freshman year, I had became best friends with this girl. And she had two older, hot-ass brothers. One was in college, and one was a senior. Well, it was Christmas break, and her older brother from college was home. And my parents let me go with them to Florida for Christmas break. They had a super nice beach house, and I was sharing a room with my best friend. And the boys were sharing a room. And our room was connected because there was a bathroom in the middle. Well, my best friend got super sick the first, like, three days of the trip, so she didn't do anything with us. So I was hanging out with the boys all the time. Well, the one night we were on the deck and we started to play truth or dare. And one of them asked, would you sleep with us? And I said, yeah. So at around 3 a.m., I snuck into their room and things started to get real nasty. There are kids on this app, so just use your imagination. And things started to get really loud and we woke their parents up, like for part two. Part two. So we thought that we woke their parents up. And we heard someone walking up the stairs. So I ran into the bathroom, hid, and they asked if everything was okay. And I was just like, oh, I'm not feeling good. I think I caught whatever my best friend has. So they went back downstairs and we thought they went back to sleep. They were never asleep. So we decided to go onto the deck and finish the nastiness that we were doing. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, like we don't have to be that quiet now. Because their bedroom was in the front of the house and the porch was on the back of the house. 
And we were on the second floor and below that there was another porch with like a fire pit and everything. And I could see below us. Well, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw somebody walk into the house. But stupid me, I just ignored it. Not even a minute later, I hear the sliding door open and I hear, <gasps> And we all turn around and everybody's standing there. So they sent me home and told my parents. But I didn't get grounded because low-key my mom knew I was a hoe. <laughs> Story time about how I tried to get my boyfriend back for cheating on me, but I ended up with an STD instead. So a little background information. I was dating this guy for about seven months whenever I was in high school. And I would always hang out with him, his guy friends, and their girlfriends. Well, the one night we were hanging out at my house and he kept checking my phone. And he said it was because he was waiting for his mom to text my phone. So then he had to go to the bathroom and he asked to take my phone with him. And I said no because that's weird as fuck. So while he's in the bathroom, I get a text from a random number. And it's a bunch of videos that my boyfriend took of him doing the nasty with other girls. And there were like 15 videos, all different girls. So by this time he's been in the bathroom for like 15 minutes. So I go to confront him while he's in the bathroom, like I do not care at this point, and he's gone. My bathroom window is wide open. My curtains are broken. So then I start to text all of his best friends. Like for part two. Part two. So it turns out the person who sent it to me was one of the girls in my friend group. So at that point, every single person in that friend group was dead to me and I needed to get every single one of them back. So like I said, I started texting all my ex's best friends and I asked every single one of them if they wanted to hook up. Four of them said yes, the other three just blocked me. And the four who said yes all had girlfriends in our friend group. Well, the girls in my friend group had no idea so they invited me to their party. And at that party, it was my mission to do the dirty with every single one of those guys. Well, there was this bathroom in the basement, which nobody knew about except the girl whose house it was. So one after the other, I did the dirty with every single one of them in that bathroom. And I made sure to snap a picture or take a video. So that way I could send it to my boyfriend. I know, I'm crazy, get over it. Well, in the morning, my ex's closest best friend came over. Well, I did the dirty with him too, because my ex hated him being around me, because he was known for screwing other people's girlfriends. Okay, there's gonna be a part three. Part three. So a week later, I started having some problems down there. So I had my mom take me to the doctors. Turns out I have a fucking STD. And nobody knew about it, at least not yet. Well, my boyfriend came over that same day asking if we could get back together. So I thought, what an even better way to get back at him. Give him what I have. Mind you, I was still hooking up with all four of his best friends. And then like two weeks later, my boyfriend started talking to me about how he was also having problems down there. And I was like, oh, maybe you should go to the doctors. So after he went to the doctors, he texts me and he goes, yeah, I have an STD. So then I sent him all the videos of his best friends and I, and I said, yeah, I hope you enjoy living with that for the rest of your life. And I also gave it to all of his friends and then they spread it to their girlfriends. Payback's a bitch. Story time about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with my stepsister. So a little background information, my mom remarried whenever I was in 8th grade. And my stepdad had two daughters. One which was my age and we got along really well. Well before my sisters and I went back to school, my mom wanted to go on a camping trip with everyone. And my boyfriend was coming because he was really close with my family. So while my stepsister and I are packing up, she starts acting really weird. And we're gonna call my boyfriend Kevin. She was like, oh is Kevin still coming with us? And I was like, yeah. And then she goes, oh, are you and Kevin still together? And I'm like, we were never broken up. Like the fuck? Like I said, she was just being super fucking weird. But anyways, we all get in the car, we drive up there and her and Kevin start being super weird around each other. Like they were being too touchy. Anytime that I wanted to go do something with Kevin, she would say, oh, Kevin, you can come do this instead. Well, that night, Kevin and I are sleeping in our tent. At least I thought he was. And I wake up to some loud noises in the other tent, like for part two. Part two. So like I said, I heard a bunch of noises and talking in my stepsister's tent. And I wake up and my boyfriend isn't in the tent. So I'd be very quiet getting out of my tent and I go over to hers and I just listen. And oh bitch, I should have just confronted them because I got my motherfucking feelings hurt. He was telling her how he didn't love me at all and how he only wanted to be with her. And how every time that they kissed each other and screwed each other, 
he felt such a connection between them. So not only was he cheating physically, but they had a connection. Wonderful. So I open her tent and I confront them. This was the most degrading thing I've ever went through in my life. And I said, I heard you guys outside. And I'm just not the type of girl who's going to come at another girl because my man wants her. Because at that point, he's not my man. She goes, sit down, sweetie. We need to talk. Apparently, they're in love. So they started dating. They're still dating. And my parents allowed it. So I distanced myself from all of them. Story time about how I woke up to my best friend having a seizure. A little background information. So my close friend invited me over to his house to spend the night. And we're gonna call him Jay. Well, Jay and I got to his house and his parents were really strict so he had to sneak me in. So he told me to wait by the garage. And as soon as he opens the front door to his house, I hear his parents screaming. So he's inside fighting with his parents. I'm outside freezing my ass off. So an hour later, he comes out to get me, walks me through the garage, and I have to hide in this crawl space. So while I'm hiding in this crawl space, him and his parents are still arguing. And his parents walk past where I was like five times. So his mom gets in the car and leaves. She said she was going to kill herself. His dad comes into the garage, starts crying. I literally witness him have a mental fucking breakdown. Then his mom came back, said that she hated everybody. So then Jay purposely bangs his head off of the kitchen table two times. So when he came into the garage to get me, he had a nice pack on his head. Then we snuck up to his room like for part two. Part two. So like I said, he rushes me up to his room because his dad was in the basement and his mom left again, threatening to kill herself again. And while we're upstairs, he starts taking dabs and we're up for a little bit and then we go to sleep. So at like eight in the morning, we both wake up. He's on his phone. I'm on my phone. We're not facing each other. And then all of a sudden, I feel the bed start to shake like a lot. So I turn over and this kid is having a full blown fucking seizure. Like he's foaming at the mouth. His eyes are literally rolling in the back of his fucking head. So I get up and roll him over onto his side because I didn't want him to start choking. And I'm fucking freaking out and don't know what to do because I wasn't even supposed to be there in the first place. And he's like making all these types of noises. So I go and I run down the hallway. I try to find his parents room and I open the door and have to wake them up dead out of their sleep. And I was like, um, your son's having a seizure. So his mom runs over to the room and his dad's like, well, who the fuck are you? And why the fuck are you in my house? And I was like, your son told me that I could stay the night last night. Oh, like for part three. Part three. So like I said, his dad's like interrogating me right now. So they call an ambulance. His son leaves in the ambulance. They didn't go with him. And his dad's like, you're never allowed in this fucking house again. And then he asked me, did he take anything last night? And I'm like, he did dabs, but like, I didn't do anything because I don't do that stuff. So he goes over to where all of his dab stuff is and starts throwing the glass pieces in the garbage, making sure that he fucking breaks them all. And his mom comes over to me to comfort me because I'm literally like fucking crying because this kid almost died right next to me. And she's like, it's okay, sweetie. Like this happens to him a lot. But I felt so uncomfortable because he was like making it seem like it was my fault. So I hurry up and call my mom and my mom doesn't get there till like 30 minutes because their house is a little bit further away. And for all of you wondering what happened to him, I don't know because this happened this morning. Story time about how I broke up my best friend and his girlfriend. So it was our sophomore year in high school, and my best friend and I had known each other since we were like eight years old. And I've always had a crush on him. Like anytime he would get a girlfriend, I would try and break them up. And it would work. Well, our freshman year of high school, he started dating this one girl. Well, when he started dating her, he distanced himself from me because she didn't like how much time we were spending together. So a few months go by and my birthday's coming up. And mind you, within these past few months, we only seen each other like twice. And he had me blocked on all social media. Well, our parents were really good friends because we lived in the same cul-de-sac. So my mom invited him and his parents to my birthday party. So at the end of my party, my friends left and him and his parents stayed. And my parents really didn't care if I drank alcohol, so we had like a whole bottle of vodka to ourselves. So we're in the basement and we're taking shots together. Well, I got him super drunk and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, I went on his phone and like for part two. Part two. And I was able to get into... Story time about how I found out that my boyfriend was trying to get with another girl on Valentine's Day. Okay, there's a lot that goes into this story time, so let me break it down for you real quick. I was a sophomore, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for about four months now. And he was a junior. 
Well, there was this girl that he was for some reason obsessed with in his Spanish class. She was a freshman. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, well, how did you know he was obsessed with her? Well, he would Snapchat this girl 24-7. Even his friends told me he was obsessed with her. So I talked to him and I told him I was uncomfortable with how much he was talking to this girl. And he said, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'll block her. Now, I didn't ask him to do that, but it made me feel more confident in how he felt about me. Well, Valentine's Day comes around. And we didn't talk all day until he came to pick me up. I wished him a happy Valentine's Day and got left on delivered. So we get to the restaurants and we decide to put our phones at the end of the table so that way we would be more focused on each other. Well, he goes to the bathroom and then I see this name pop up on his phone. Like for part two. Part two. So, like I said, I saw this name on his phone, and there was something special about this name. So, whenever I kept streaks, I would put the word streak, and then an emoji, and then the person's name. And he got the idea that instead of keeping her name, he would put it as streak. So, I was like, that's really fucking weird. And at first, I was like, what the fuck? So, I opened his phone, and what do you know? It's from that girl. And she was replying back to a big paragraph that he sent her. And we had school that same day. So at 6.30 in the morning, this girl got a big paragraph from my boyfriend about how she's such a beautiful, amazing girl and that she deserves somebody who's going to take her out and buy her flowers and stuff. And how if she wanted to go out to dinner, let him know. He took an extremely long time in the bathroom, so the waiter came to our table. So I ordered $300 worth of food for myself. So when he came back, I told him that I had to go call my mom, and I left. And he was stuck with a $400 bill. Story time about my worst trip off LSD. So one of the kids in my friend group was about to leave for Arizona. And we would always talk about how we need to trip together before he leaves. To his phone because he sold my fingerprint from when we were best friends so i unblocked myself on all social medias and there was an ottoman pushed against the couch so while he was sleeping i was able to go lay next to him so while i was laying next to him i took a few pictures of us and i saved them in his camera roll and i also sent one to his girlfriend and it was about one in the morning well she opened it right away and then she started going off and would not stop calling his phone so after that i turned his phone off so he started to wake up and then we started drinking more and then we started fooling around and while we were doing the nasty i took a video but he didn't see it because the phone was in front of me and i had his girlfriend on snapchat so what did i do i sent the motherfucking video to her so the next day obviously he found out what happened so then he came over to my house to talk to me and i told him how i was upset that she was keeping him from me so he broke up with her and started dating